GLM models with fixed defects are challenging to estimate and many GLM models with fixed defects can't even be estimated consistently. Conditional logistic regression model is one workaround to the problem that fixed defects in a logistic regression simply can't be estimated. These kind of models are often used in, for example, CO selection studies and sometimes in panel data sets where the dependent variable is binary. Let's take a look at first what is the problem that conditional fixed effects logistic recursion addresses or what does the conditional in the estimation mean. When we talk about linear models then we have two commonly used panel data analysis techniques to deal with unobserved heterogeneity. We have uh, the fixed effects model where we model these consistent differences between the, the groups or the clusters using uh, this fixed effect that we estimate separately for each cluster. This is known as the dummy variable model because the simplest way or the easiest way to understand how these models are estimated is considering that we add a dummy variable for each group or each cluster in the data. Another commonly used technique is the random effects estimation and this is called also the error components model because we model the unobserved heterogeneity here in the random part as a part of the error term and not as a fixed, part, element, fixed parameter whose value is estimated for each case. Importantly, this second formulation makes the random effects assumption that all unobserved differences are uncorrelated with observed predictor variables. When we move to the GLM world, we have a fixed effect GLM model for cluster data. What we add is a link function G here around the fixed part and same applies to the GLM model for cluster data. We have the link function but it also includes the, the error term or, or the uh, random effect here. How are these two models estimated? In the linear world we often just use a GLS transformation and then apply all as regression analysis the fixed effects and the random effects use slightly different transformations, but the OLS step is the same. In nonlinear models, these are estimated very differently. The generalized linear mixed model for cluster data is estimated by numerical integration. So we uh, integrate out the random effect to calculate the likelihood for, for this model and the data, and then we uh, maximize that likelihood and that produces us the maximum likelihood estimates. This is more challenging to estimate. So in regression analysis or linear model context, we have three main strategies for estimating this model. And none of them work in the case of nonlinear model. Let's take a look at first the transformation. The GLS transformation for fixed effects model is basically that we calculate the group mean or cluster mean of each of our variables and then we subtract those group means or cluster means from the observations. So we cluster mean or group means center the data and then we apply OLS regression to the center data. Centering eliminates the unobserved effect AJ. In this case, when we have a nonlinear model, centering can be applied because this AJ is inside the link function. So we can not just subtract it, subtract it by using a simple transformation. The second way of estimating is the dummy variable model. Include dummies for all, all, all clusters or groups and estimate with OLS. That works because OLS is unbiased, but it does not work with GLMs because ML estimates of GLM models are generally biased. They are consistent, but they're biased. And the normal sample size that we have for clusters, if we have a panel data, Let's say we have 10 observations, 20 observations for each firm. We have a very small number of observations from which to estimate each AI. And we simply can't get these right. They will be biased. And consequently, the full model will be inconsistently estimated. The third strategy that we can apply in the linear case is the correlated random effects approach, or also known as the Mundlach technique or a hybrid approach where we include cluster means of the predictor variables in addition to the original variables. And that produces the within effect consistently in linear models, but that too doesn't work in the nonlinear case 
The reason is that if we take the cluster mean from a small number of observations, then there will be some estimation, some let's call it measurement error in the cluster mean and those measurement errors make this entire thing inconsistent. This third problem is discussed for example in this blog post by Allison. In the context of logistic regression analysis this problem is addressed pretty well in Allison's book and uh, he explains that there is an incidental parameter problem and this relates to the fact that maximum likelihood estimates estimation techniques have proven to be consistent which means they are approach the correct value when sample size grows to infinity. The problem is that if we have panel data growing the sample size typically means uh, getting more firms into our, our sample and that means that we have more parameters to estimate. So also the number of parameters if we estimate a separate intercept for each firm or each cluster grows to infinity and then all the theory behind maximum likelihood estimation no longer works. Conditional fixed effects estimation does away with this problem. So let's take a look at the normal regression model. So we have uh, the regression model models uh, the odds of the two outcomes. So we have the, the probability of positive outcome divided by the probability of negative outcome and that is exponential of these uh, of the linear predict predictor. So the AI is in an inconvenient place here. We can, we can work a bit on the math and move AI here, but that doesn't really, really take us anywhere. What we can do now is to make an assumption. So if we assume that there is only one positive outcome in each group, then we can write the probability slightly differently. So we can write the probability like that. So the probability of a positive outcome for an observation within a group is the, uh, the uh, prediction for that observation, the exponential prediction for that observation divided by the sum of the exponential predictor predictions for all other observations. So we can think of this as, as relative probability of the current case divided by the sum of relative probabilities of all cases. And here we can see that AI is a multiplier on, on the numerator and denominator. It can cancel out and now we have a probability that does not involve the fixed effect. To understand what this means, let's take a look at an example. So let's assume that we have uh, two hockey teams. They, they have won three games and seven games out of their previous games. So if we have these teams uh, facing each other, based on these data, the probability of the first team winning is this relative probability, three, seven, uh, divided by three plus seven, which is the sum of, let's call them relative probabilities. And this is seven divided by three plus seven. So it's 30% against 70%. And this is the idea of, of conditional logistic regression analysis. It does not matter how good these teams are. So this might be a game where the teams are highly skilled. That might be the final of uh, the National League or it might be some lower league level game. The game level variable AI, unobserved effect, cancels out in both cases and we are only comparing the relative probabilities of these companies. If you want to see how that's derived, that I just showed, here's the derivation from Wikipedia, but I don't think that's very useful for an applied researcher to know. But if you're interested, that's the math. Let's take a look at how it works in, in, in Stata code. So I'm generating some data here. We are generating uh, three clusters. So we just set the observations to three. We generate group variable which is just one, two, and three. And uh, then uh, we generate, the, the group is an unobserved effect. We generate a linear prediction uh, using normal distribution with x plus the group effect. And that gives us, when we exponent the eight, gives us the relative probabilities. So how we calculate the, the probability of each case is that we calculate the denominator for each group. So the denominator is the same for each, each observation in the group. We take the sum of these relative probabilities 
we divide it by the denominator, we get the p-values and uh, those are the probabilities. So it doesn't really matter if uh, the unobserved effect A is high or not, we are just comparing the relative probabilities, not any absolute level of, of skill or innovativeness or whatever is our variable. Importantly, these probabilities always sum to one within a group. So there's always exactly one observation that gets a positive outcome within a group. Of course, it can be some number other than one. We can have like two or three, but the idea is that the number of positive outcomes is fixed. Let's take a look at example data on, and, and discuss a bit about how these results are interpreted from these models. So our example data is from case control study of low birth weight baby mothers. So we have uh, some mothers with low birth weight babies and for each mother we have a control mother who is similar to the case mother but did not have a low birth weight baby. So this is a, a matched pair case control study and the observations are clustered on, on pair ID. So this one cluster always contains two observations. One is low birth weight, another one is a normal birth weight baby. We run conditional logistic regression analysis and we get some estimates. But before we take a look at these estimates, we need to do diagnostics for this model to make sure that the model makes sense. I will not do the diagnostics in the video because this is just an introduction, but if you're interested in for example, this book by Hosmer and co-authors provides one chapter worth of explanation on how to do diagnostics and they have also stated a code that implements the diagnostics that they recommend. So this is useful to take a look at if you want to apply these techniques in your own research. Let's move to interpretation. So how would we interpret these, these coefficients? Fortunately, we can exponentiate the coefficients and those still work as odds ratios like we have in a normal regression analysis. I'm not personally a big fan of odd ratios because I think they are a bit awkward to interpret, but many researchers do find them useful based on how frequently they are reported. Another way of, of looking at the coefficients is to uh, convert them into elasticities. And this is explained by uh, Kemp and Da Silva. And uh, they also provide a state program for, for doing this conversion. Here we would interpret, for example, the coefficient of smoke, that's elasticity 0.7. The interpretation is that uh, when two mothers are comp otherwise comparable, the smoker has a 70% higher chance of getting a low birth weight baby than the non-smoker mother. Importantly, this is a, a relative effect, so it's not 70% 70 70 points, but it's like if the non-smoker had a 10% chance of getting a low birth weight baby, then uh, the smoker has 17% chance. So it's a relative effect instead of uh, absolute percentage points effect. So this is a useful way, way to interpret this. Then we can also apply a pseudo R squares, particularly the two pseudo R squares, which is my favorite, is directly applicable. How we calculate the two R square is that we simply calculate predictions. So we calculate the predictive probabilities and these are always calculated assuming that there is one positive case and one negative case. So the probability is always sum to one. And then we compare the predictive probabilities for the cases and predictive probabilities for the controls. We can see that for the controls, we have 30% predictive probability for the cases, we get 70% predictive probability. So this model is pretty good at discriminating the cases from the controls. And uh, the pure R square for this model would be then 0.4. Another thing that I often like to do after logistic regression analysis is to calculate adjusted predictions. So then in normal regression analysis context, the adjusted predictions are calculated by first setting everyone to, to 80 pounds of, of weight, then 100 pounds, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200 and 220, 240. So we calculate these, uh, and these effects or predictions assuming everyone is 80 pounds, everyone is 120, everyone is, is 200 pounds and so on. And then we plot the, uh, the adjusted predictions. This does not work in conditional logic 
The reason is that if we adjust everybody, then the results for the predictions are, are pretty unpredictable because we are comparing relative probabilities. If we adjust the, the weight of everybody, then the, rel the, uh, the predictive probability on average will stay the same because they will always, the prob probabilities will always sum to one within clusters in this case. So margins generally is not very useful and the status documentation of margin simply says that these, these effects are not allowed and the reason is that uh, the effects, they are, the marginal effects depend on other observations in the cluster. Margins does calculate linear predictions but that's not very useful and it also calculates probability of a positive outcome assuming that the fixed effect is zero and that is pretty useless too. So margin is pretty much useless after conditional logistic regression model. What we can do instead is just to use predict to calculate our own what-if scenarios. And I'm comparing the, the base scenario against two what-if scenarios. So I have P as the base prediction, that is the prediction given by the model and predictor variables are the ones that we observe. And then we, uh, we adjust all the low birth babies, mothers to be non-smokers. So we adjust all of those to be non-smokers and then uh, we adjust later everybody to be a non-smoker and we calculate new probabilities for each case under these two conditions. When we compare the base probability, the predictive probability for a low birth weight baby, mother is 70%. If those mothers were non-smokers, this would go down to less than 60%. So it's a pretty substantial difference, more than 10 percentage points. Interestingly, when we adjust everyone to be a non-smoker, so we basically el eliminate effects of smoking, then uh, the probability of these low birth weight mothers, even if they're non-smokers, again goes up. And this is one of the, of the features or let's say or weaknesses of this conditional logistic regression analysis. So it does not, not check how I would do. So if we're looking at an individual level effect like we would do in a low birth weight baby scenario Okay, they, but it always compares one, one observation against others. And if we want to introduce some kind of policy that reduces the amount of, of low birth weight babies in the population, then uh, this would be a pretty useless analysis. But this kind of scenario and what if analysis can be useful in other contexts. So for example, if we go to my ice hockey example from previous slide, if we have a team and they have a star player and then that star player is out of the game because of, of an injury, then that automatically increases the probability that the other team wins. So the probabilities are really tied and uh, because of, of, of just one team can win a game. The same applies in management research context, for example, uh, choice of CEO. A company must have a CEO and they are, can have one CEO only. So if we have five candidates, the, the probability of hiring one increases, then the probability of hiring others will decrease. So asking questions such as how much less likely a leading candidate would have, or, or selected candidate would have been had his experience been five years less is a meaningful question because here we know that it makes sense that the probability of other cases increases when probability of one case decreases. So whether these predictions make sense depend on the context of the study. The conditional estimation can be applied to other GLMs. For example, Allison talks about how this applies to Poisson regression model. Here the conditional assumption is that the count of the dependent variable, this counts, the sum of the counts is constant within group. Now, this conditional fixed effects is a bit complicated to interpret and we might ask, do, I, do we really need this estimation technique? And this question, do we really need conditional logistic regression analysis, can be separated into two sub-questions. The first question is, is are fixed effects required? And 
let's assume that we have a hypothetical case where we have 10, 10 companies, observations are set to 10 in my Stata code that are generated that are choosing CEOs and each company has two CEO candidates and they will always pick one. And uh, the experience varies. So, so some companies get more experienced candidates than others. And then the experience also of these candidates vary within company. And the choice of the CEO is completely determined by experience. So the more experienced candidate is always chosen. So the within R square of this model is exactly one. Here's the data. So you can see that some companies receive less experienced applicants, some companies receive more experienced candidates, but the company will always choose the, the most experienced one, one among those that apply to that company. If we ignore clustering, which is run a normal log logistic regression analysis, we will find that experience is only weakly associated with selection. So the coefficient of experience is just 0.15, not very large considering that experience varied between a bit less than zero to a bit more than 10, and pseudo R score is 0 0.004, which is a fairly small number. But if we do a conditional logistic regression analysis, we can see that the model explains the dependent variable perfectly. And because of the perfect prediction, uh, this effect of experience is actually infinite and we don't have any standard error. So this is the, uh, the perfect uh, prediction scenario that I talk about in the context of logistic regression in another video. Let's take a look at the data again. So here these, these uh, dummy coefficients are estimates of the fixed effect. Again, they can be consistently estimated, but we can see, see uh, something from here. So we can see that the fixed effect gets more negative for these companies as, as the, the list goes down. And we can see that the experience gets more positive as we go down the list. So we can see that there's a strong correlation between the fixed effects that are unobserved and the observed experience. So the random effects are assumption fails here. In this case, if we simply analyze these data with logistic regression analysis or even random effect logistic regression analysis, we would reach a completely incorrect uh, conclusion. Experience is the only thing that matters. Those other models would show that the experience has little effects because they can't take into account the unobserved fixed effects on the cluster level. The second question is, do we need a logistic model? And this is more nuanced. And if you're wondering about using conditional logistic regression model, there's quite a lot of uh, articles that, that talk about the trade-offs between using a logistic model compared to simple linear model. If we look at the logistic curve and we look at this area from 0.02 to 0.08, it's, it's flat, so it's, it's linear, it's straight. And if we have predicted probabilities that are in that area, then using normal linear regression analysis will be completely fine and a lot simpler to do than using conditional logistic regression analysis. This uh, figure is from Timoneda and they provide other similar figures and simulation evidence about the per relative performance of these two companies, uh, these two uh, estimation approaches. Conditional logistic model and linear model are also summarized nicely in this table by, by Gomila and, and he notes that these uh, linear regression model generally easy to interpret and uh, logistic regression analysis rarely has any substantial advantages over a linear model. Of course, there are scenarios where the, the non-linearity of the logistic regression analysis is an advantage but in many cases, the linear model should be at least considered because of its simplicity.